Hi, this is Rex Carden with the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And uh, we are just getting a Proton Center up and running. And so we have started to uh, play around with the Topaz Monte Carlo engine. And I am not a Linux person at all. I'm a Windows C Sharp .NET uh, guy. And so it was challenging for me to get this up and running uh, for the first time. Even though the tutorials are great and really the instructions and the user groups are awesome, um, it still is just a little bit challenging if you're not used to working in Linux. So I decided to record this video to help anybody who is uh, wanting to get started uh, with that um, kind of easy to use Monte Carlo uh, wrapper around the Giant 4 engine. So here we go. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you have the Linux subsystem on Windows enabled. Uh, to, to enable that, you need to have either the educational version of Windows or the, um, I think Windows 10 Professional is the minimum version necessary to turn that on. So you go to uh, the notifications, all settings. Um, that's not right. Let's see. Here we go. Apps. Um, over here, you have the programs and features. And you go to turn Windows features on or off. Scroll down, and you should make sure you have a checkbox next to Windows Subsystem for Linux. This is going to enable Linux to communicate with the Windows kernel um, so you can run Ubuntu on your workstation. So once you've got that, if you don't already have it checked, it's going to make you restart your computer. Once you've restarted, it should be ready to go, and you can just type in um, Ubuntu. And you'll see an option in the store for both Ubuntu 18 and 16. And if you just click on this, you can click on Install App. And Install. And this will take a little uh, bit of time, so I'm going to pause it while it's downloading. So now that you have it installed and you press launch, it's going to open up this terminal and it's going to ask you to enter the uh, administrator username. And it's also going to ask for a password. And it's going to ask for it again. OK, so now you've got Ubuntu on your system. And the first thing you want to do when you install Ubuntu is update it. So if you type in sudo, which goes into the administrative mode, apt update, and then type in your password, it's going to just go through and, and update this release to make sure it's got all of the um, main packages for Ubuntu up, updated. It'll take just a second. And now that that's done, we can go to the Topaz website. So you want to go to www.topazmc.org and you will have already needed to um, have registered and to actually download Topaz you have to uh, watch a live webinar uh, with Joseph Pearl. It takes about an hour and 30 minutes I think, something like that. And once you're done you will have, he'll enable your um, username uh, your Google username to be authenticated on this website so you can you can get past this main screen. So you can actually download Topaz until you've done that. So, But once you have, and I have in this case, you can go to sign in. And now that I'm authenticated, you can see the URLs changed up here. And I have two new options. One of them is called Code Repository. You want to go there. And these are the installation instructions over here. So you're going to download, um, you can see up here, that for Ubuntu 18, you're going to want the Debian 9 AMD 64. So we're going to download that. Um, it's down here somewhere. Let's see. I think I passed it already. Yeah, here we go. So you're going to download this. I've already downloaded it. And then um, go to installation instructions. And this is going to show us um, everything we need to do um, to get this up and running. So I closed uh, the terminal and reopened Ubuntu. So it's a kind of a fresh start here. And we're going to just follow the instructions, which um, are to install these um, different packages. 
So for each of these, um, you might want to just start it with sudo, just so you um, are an administrator executing these. I'm going to copy that. And if I press the right mouse button in the terminal, it will paste it. And the first time you do this, you're going to have to type in a password. And it's going to say, I already have this because I just installed these. Um, as I was testing this part of the tutorial out. But what you want to do is just do this again and again, sudo apt install this, sudo apt install this, sudo apt so do, do that for each of these. It's going to take about five minutes to get all these packages installed on this workstation. And once you're done, then you are ready to actually unpack the Topaz tar file. So again, the Topaz tar file um, can be found in the code repository. <clears throat> And you're going to want this DBN9, so download it. It'll go to your downloads folder. And um, so what we're going to do, <clears throat> this is the command we're going to, going to use. But we want to actually move um, this file in our downloads and move it to the home directory of our Ubuntu installation. The home directory can be found by going to this very long path here, C users username app data if you don't see app data you can go to view hidden items make sure that that's checked because app data is a hidden folder click that local then you go to packages you see all these indecipherable packages one of them says canonical group starts with a c has a buntu in the name click that local state i told you this was a long path root file system home and then your username again. And this is the actually the home directory. Um, so if you press, uh, I'm going to paste that file from my downloads to here. And I'm going to copy this unpack command. Go back to Ubuntu. I can tell I'm in my home directory because I have this tilde. If you're not in the home directory, you can always do cd change directory space tilde. And that'll put you back in the home directory. So again, I'm going to do a sudo command. That's administrative mode. Paste that unzip. It's going to unzip that Topaz uh, <clears throat> file to, um, to that folder. So if I go back to my home directory, I can see now there's a Topaz folder in there, and it has um, these examples. The next step in the installation is to actually download the data files for the Giant 4 uh, Monte Carlo system. And you can literally just copy this whole stack of commands and paste them. And so it's going to make a directory called, oops, this is the wrong, uh, that's not actually what I want. I took the Mac instructions. You want to skip down to the Linux instructions. I saw that my make directory was going to the wrong place. <clears throat> so let me copy these, open up a new terminal. There we go. So I'm making a directory called G4 data. Let me delete that. If there was another one. No, there's not. Okay, good. So this will take a second. It's going to download um, quite a bit of data for the Giant 4 system. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it, and it'll probably take about 5 to 10 minutes while it downloads all of this, and then we'll pick up. And this is what it should look like whenever that command is complete after it's done all of those downloads for the Giant 4 data. Now if we follow the instructions, uh, the next instructions say to set some environment variables. We're going to point to the Giant 4 data and point to the external libraries. Um, I'm actually going to do, I'm going to modify this a little bit because I don't like to have um, all that Topaz stuff so deep in the um, file system. So what I'd rather do in my case is I'd rather make a file or folder on the desktop, or not on the desktop, but on my C drive called top, Topaz. Uh, maybe Topaz data, for example. And I'm going to go back to my home directory and I'm just going to copy all of this.
and I'm not exactly sure how I got all of these files. <laughs> it must have been something something I did wrong. I, I copied those. I think all of these should have ended up in the G4 data folder, which they are also in here. Um, so I don't think you need all of those folders. I think all you really need is the G4 data and the Topaz uh, files. So I'm going to copy those and I'm going to put them on in my Topaz data folder on the C drive, just so I can manage this um, easier. And now I'm just going back to my home directory and I'm going to go ahead and delete these and all of those other files, everything that wasn't here uh, to begin with. So it'll take just a second. And uh, so this will be gone. My home directory will be clean. And then I now I have this Topaz uh, data <clears throat> that has the um, folders here. So what I, we're going to need to do is link this directory to uh, Ubuntu so it knows where this is. Um, so I closed it out, but let me open it back up. And so from the home directory, um, what you can do is you can say CD and then forward slash, and that kind of goes up one level. You can always see what's what's in that folder by pressing LS list. And you can see one of the drives, one of the folders inside the um, root directory is called mount or M M M MNT. And the MNT directory in Linux is to help you get access to hard drives, uh, which are uh, a part of the Windows operating system. So what we can do is we can navigate. Uh, so what it does is it sets it sets the hard drives as children of this folder. So for example, I can say CD um, MNT, and then I can say list, and it'll show me my hard drives. In this case, I only have one hard drive. It's the C drive. So I can say CD. C and now I'm kind of navigating downwards. And remember that I, I named that um, folder Topaz Data. So this is the directory that I want to add um, as kind of a folder inside my home directory. So the way you can do that is I'm going to go back to my home directory, CD space tilde, and I'm going to say link, and this is like a S. Dash S is like simulated link, so it's not going to copy the files. It's just going to act like it that folders in the directory, and um, then I'm using the F to force this in case I've already done this, and I'm just now I paste the link that I want. So, <clears throat> so now from within my home directory I can do list, and now I can see that Topaz data as if it were in my home directory, even though it resides on my C drive. I can now act like this folder is in the home directory. So I did that just again to kind of separate um, the data. So if I ever upgrade Ubuntu or change computers, I can move this real quickly. It's all in this folder right here. And all I have to do is add this soft link to my home directory. Now we're going to need to set up the environment variables which you have to do every time you open the terminal. I'm going to show you how to make it where you don't have to do it every time. Um, but the concept here is you use the keyword export and then you um, name the environment variable, which in this case is Topaz G4 data directory. And that's in the home forward slash Topaz data. That's the folder um, that we just virtually made here. And then remember in the Topaz data was the Topaz folder and actually that's not where it is so I need to erase this because I put the G4 data right in the Topaz data folder so that's the first one and then the second one is going to look something like this let's see So we're going to make a LD library path and then again point to the to inside the Topaz data, Topaz lib external folder. And it looks like this. This is right from the instructions, by the way. Right here. I've modified it just a little bit because I'm using that, that uh, C drive directory. OK. Um, so. By default, this Ubuntu does not support uh, GUI, 
So you're going to have to um, download a, a, a GUI to uh, be able to see these Monte Carlo simulations. The one that I have been told to use is this Xming X server. So you can go to Source for SourceForge Projects Xming, download this, and install it. And after it's installed, it should just run. You should see the um, icon down here in the bottom right. So if you want a GUI uh, graphic interface, then you should download this and and do that. And then if you once you've done that, you can just uh, do this final command export display equals colon zero and that will launch the GUI whenever it's appropriate. So now we are set up to run an example one of the uh, one of the example codes um, that uh, are provided in the instructions. So I literally have not run this yet and I am going to just hope it works. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, I'm going to change the directory, I'm going to follow this single example right here. So I'm going to go to CD and um, so I'm in my home, so I'm going to go to Topaz Data CD Examples Oops, I forgot, got another folder in there and cd examples forward slash special components okay so once I'm in that folder that's got the um, directions um, and then that's got this multi-leaf columnar sequence file and then you want to call the topaz um, executable which is two directories up so you do that by typing, I'm following the directions right here. In fact, I can just copy this, It'd be a lot easier instead of watching me type. All right, and then you should be able to just press enter. Let's see, error while loading shared libraries, file too short. Hmm. So it looks like I did not copy all of those files all the way. One of them did not come over, so I just recopied them and repasted them in the Topaz um, lib external directory. You could do the whole thing. You could just unzip that Topaz file again just to make sure. Because what, remember what I did is I copied and pasted it from my uh, from a different directory. So I just recopied and pasted those those libraries from where I first unzipped it. And then I, I did already, now I have run this so I, can, I saw it works. So I'm gonna do the same command and you can see it launches it and opens the GUI up and runs this uh, simulation. So I told you I would show you how to uh, make it where you don't have to set those environment variables every time. The way you do it is um, I'm going to my Topaz data folder on my C drive. And I'm going to make a new text file. I'm going to call it set environment variable. And what you want to do is just paste um, those commands that you used earlier to set the environment variables. So I'm going to save this. And let's change it to a executable shell file. Just going to grab the name of this. Then go back to your home directory. Remember packages, all of that stuff that we went to earlier. There should be a profile uh, file in there, dot profile. At the bottom, you can type source and then you want to just point to that and everything has got to be exactly the right case here so you can't do like capital T here or that'll mess it up so source that's the virtual path we made earlier and then we put that shell script right there that's gonna execute every time your terminal starts up so I'm gonna say let's see uh, Ubuntu 
And if you don't get any errors, if that works, you, you'll see no errors here. If that doesn't work, you'll get an error that says can't find that file or whatever. You can also do print, uh, print evn. And you can see um, right here, so if you print environment variables, you can see that that has, has been set correctly. And uh, where's the other one? Nah, I don't know, but it's here. These are all, these are correctly set now. Oh, here we go, the library. So now you can uh, just start any terminal anytime and that will run. So you can do CD topaz data and then you can <clears throat> descend down to your topaz uh, directory and, and pull up any uh, any of the examples. All right, hopefully that's been educational for you. I know it will be educational for me in the future when I do this on another computer.